What's up, everyone? Christopher Coleman here with Track Sounds and the Soundcast with another edition of In Context. Today, I'm going to be talking about Nathan First's original score for Need for Speed In Context. In case you've forgotten, because it was so long ago, like March of 2014, Need for, Need for Speed was released uh, across the country and um, it is a movie that was directed by Scott Waugh and the score of course was uh, by Nathan First as I mentioned it was produced by DreamWorks stars Aaron Paul who is a street racer who's got some problems and he's got to race himself from the east coast all the way across the country to the west coast so he can race in another race against his arch nemesis to avenge the death of his friend and so we are taken across the country um, at speeds that should never be attained on the ground, but it's such a thrill ride. Now, the film itself uh, was loosely based on the video game franchise, if you've ever heard of Need for Speed, um, specifically the titles Need for Speed The Run, Need for Speed uh, Hot Pursuit, and Need for Speed Rivals. It brought in about $203 million globally, and a $66 million budget or so. So not bad. Um, you may recognize the two names of Scott Waugh and Nathan First together in concert because they worked together before a couple years ago on the film of Act of Valor. So how did I experience this in context and why am I reviewing it now? Well, because I didn't see it in the theater when it released. How I did see it was on my home theater, which is a decent home theater. It gets the visuals and audio uh, pretty well done and I so I watched it on Vudu and I got the high uh, super high definition version of it which you can do too and I have to say the visuals of this film are pretty impressive the cinematography was great um, the in in car shots looking you know over the driver's shoulder essentially amazing you really get a sense for the speed that these cars are going the, it's kind of a lot of shots are GoPro -y like um, supposedly no CG or minimal CG. I think I saw one or two bits of CG in there, maybe, I'm not sure. Most of it, 90% of it, 99% of it, looked like all in-camera um, stunts and, and, and whatnot, and it was, it was pretty breathtaking. Um, they were looking to differentiate themselves from the Fast and Furious franchise, kind of throwing back to more of uh, the age of uh, Steve McQueen's Bullet um, and some of the other films of that ilk in following decades, 80s, 90s. Um, and so it was, it's quite a, a thrilling film uh, and it sounds really good. Uh, so I experienced it at home theater and I think I got the full impact of, of, the, of the sound. And so how does Nathan first score work in that context? Well, um, What's interesting is at the very beginning of the film, and we'll kind of walk through this somewhat chronologically, uh, it, the score is very minimal. I was very, very surprised to see uh, or to hear, you know, kind of the main theme being established in a very postmodern rock sort of way. Guitars, harmonics, you know, very uh, simple drums, um, very spacious sounding, very simple and innocent sounding, not the big explosion of sound and visual that you might think that would start a movie like this. But then it begins to build. But the first races, usually the first half of those races, there is no music. It's just the sound effects. And man, it sounds great hearing those engines, hearing the screeching of the tires and all of that is really quite um, thrilling unto itself. But usually about a halfway through the race, something will happen like a near miss or something crazy happens and then the music comes in. And from that point on, it ups the tension of, of those race scenes. Now, as the races go on and they get longer and the action scenes get more complicated, uh, the score generally comes in a lot earlier and, um, and, and it works. And that really simple theme that was, that was established at the beginning, I, I assume for Toby, our protagonist, it begins to develop into a more heroic theme. And by the end of the film, it's a full blown orchestra fanfare on the brass. Um, and it's quite, it's quite impressive and quite enjoyable. Um, in the mix though, sometimes it's just, it's really low. It's barely, it's barely registering and those sound effects are just, just, just snuffing it out. And, and it's kind of unfortunate. 
I mean, I can, and I was intentionally trying to listen to, to hear the score, but I think for most, uh, they're not going to notice that the, that the score is being treated so illy because the sound effects um, are, are really well done and very realistic, and that's where your attention is. So I can't fault them too much for it, but, but for those of you who are like me and you're, just, you're trying to listen to the score, uh, it is a little frustrating. It's like, wow, they really buried it. And sometimes it's just paper thin. You can barely even detect that it's there sometimes. Um, but in terms of his composition, you know, it's like I said, very unexpected. Uh, this protagonist, our Aaron Paul's character, um, Toby, is, you know, kind of a, somewhat of a tragic character to some degree. Um, the acting, the writing is really pretty bad it's it's pretty bad um and so it's hard to really feel too much for them because it because that part of the film is so ineffective um but nathan's first score and his little theme for for toby is is kind of emotional it, it, it does work quite well and it's nice to that it takes that has an arc of its own and starts off so simply uh and turns into something that's you know pretty anthemic um so I would say it might be something you want to check out and actually watch in context for the visuals and for the sound effects and for Nathan First Score when you can hear it. Um, the score has been available for months. It was released by Varese Saraban back in March. Um, there are also songs in this film that were released on a separate EP. They are some of the worst songs I've heard in a film in a long time. And watching this after... Guardians of the Galaxy, where the songs are used so effectively, and they're good songs now. These are new songs, I think. I'm not sure if all of them are. But I wasn't familiar with any of them, so I assume they were new songs, and I put it into the context of the film. And they're horrible. They're really, really bad songs. I don't... I mean, some, I think there's one by Linkin Park, one by Skylar Gray. I mean, there's just... But they're bad. Oh, they're, they just don't fit. Tonally, they just don't fit, and they're so in your face. I mean, it, they're put too strongly in the forefront, and it really took me out of the film, even more so. But Nathan First Score, it does its job. I look forward to reviewing it uh, as a whole, and you'll found, find that on tracksounds.com. So that was my experience of Nathan First Original Score for Need for Speed in Context. Thanks for watching. Please give this uh, video a like if you liked it. Give us a subscribe if you want more of this kind of thing. Let us know your thoughts down in the comments. What did you think of Need for Speed? How did it compare to Fast and the Furious, in your opinion? Um, I'm not a big Fast and the Furious uh, guy, um, but I enjoyed this for the most part because um, I didn't think it was going to be as much over the toppiness as Need for Sp uh, as uh, Fast and the Furious can have, like tanks and stuff coming. But we actually did kind of get <laughs> things like that in this movie too. Um, what did you think? How do they compare? Which scores do you like better? You like Brian Tyler's music for, for Fast and the Furious more? Um, or some of the earlier scores for Need for Speed? Or are you into what Nathan first did for, uh, oops, not Need for Speed, Fast and the Furious? Or are you more into what Nathan first has done here, going much more, um, I don't know, orchestral and, and I said, as I said earlier, some postmodern rocky type of things? Are you more into that? Uh, so let us know in the comments. And again, thank you for checking us out. And until our next episode of In Context, this is Christopher Coleman, and I'll see you later.